Hey, how's it going? I pulled some cards to read to you. And I do not want to move my camera phone thing, so please look at my signs. Oh, I'm gonna have to move it. Ooh, so precarious. I hope that'll do. So, uh, yeah, pulled some si pulled some signs, <laughs> signs and portal portums. Is that the right word? I don't know. I I think I just went fuzzy right before I started doing this. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> let's see if I can get the lead out here. So I pulled some cards from four decks and the first ones I pulled were from the angel number deck. Oh, that's not it. But I did pull some from this one. The Messages of Cosmic Oracle deck. And uh, this is the angel numbers. And so I pulled three from there and <clears throat> I got four, 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 four. And the subtitle is Blessing in Disguise. There's a uh, pretty few uh, keywords here. <clears throat> so I'll go ahead and read them. They are obstacles, hardships, strength, Building character experience. There might be some difficulties ahead. Oh, I'm gonna <clears throat> go ahead and start reading that paragraph. There might. Dang it. I kissed my cat before I came in here. I think I have his hair in my mouth. There might be some difficulties ahead, but you will push through. You got this. If you've been struggling or feeling lost, the winds of change will blow in your favor if you've been suffering or feeling lost. Some things may fall apart, but you're building the framework for something much better. Hang in there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, the part about um, some things may fall apart, but you're building the framework for something much better made me think of this, uh, this game that uh, I used to play when I was a kid. And it was called pick up sticks and you have these thin like extra long toothpicks basically and they were different colors and you just like threw them down and there was like a pile and you had to like pull sticks out so the pile wouldn't fall apart it's a variation there's like a, a there was actually like a commercial game called kerplunk that was sort of like it but Look up Kerplunk. I'm not going to even try to describe that. But it does have the colored uh, extra long toothpicks. Okay, now you know that. Okay, so um, before I pulled the cards, I took some notes and I'm just going to read them real quick because it, <laughs> I did not know which cards I would be pulling when I wrote this. So. <clears throat> We don't have to do things the hard way. What the heck? Oh, groovy. We don't have to do things the hard way. Even in the community of awakening people, it has been thought that it was necessary to do things the hard way. <clears throat> uh, not that we can't gain knowledge and empathy and all kinds of other qualities and enhancements um, without doing it the hard way. Uh, the big surprise is if we hadn't already noticed, it doesn't have to be hard. I take it as fact that we create our own reality. To me, it's as simple as one person's a bummer to be around and another person is so much fun. 
And to me, that constitutes creating our own. Where's my other scrap? Uh, uh, oh, to me, that constitutes creating the very thing, your, your own reality. <laughs> and you can walk into like somebody's kind of not so upbeat, you know, world, home, uh, proximity and you just know like <laughs> you just know <laughs> so uh you know there's magic in the world and believe it or not all around us uh ever said i have a feeling that something something or been thinking of a person and then they call uh well that's what i mean the more you believe or can give space to the possibility of magic, uh, the more evidence of it there is, or that you'll find. <clears throat> that being said, I encountered challenges a lot, but joys probably more. I feel like the challenges suck all the oxygen from the room, the room being like my experience. Um, the way I met or meet them has had an effect on the tone of my life. I let them make me upset and dramatic and I must have needed that, but I've been finding a better way of dealing with the things that come along. So I know your attitude uh, can make or break a situation and the focus on going forward for me is to finally be done with that way of needing uh, of meeting any bumps in the road. There's no need to keep, <laughs> there's no need to keeping making, <laughs> to keep making it hard for myself or anyone else for that matter. It's not like there wasn't an abundance of times where things went fine. I don't know if anyone else is having to call tech support a lot more than ever lately but that has been like the battleground <laughs> but again like it's not like just constantly uh you know a struggle <laughs> so um i just kind of felt like that i don't know this sort of like reconstruction or under construction business it was just made me think of the notes that I wrote way before I pulled the cards. Yay, I love that. Magic. Uh, so, um, oh, blessing in disguise, by the way. Like, going through the struggle and the hardship that they, and the obstacles that the keywords mentioned on here, usually, uh, after some period of time, you go through whatever emotions you may need to go through because of whatever happened. Uh, and then later, another situation will come up and the piece of information that you need to like fix the situation uh, just appears. <laughs> like the thing you need, well, there it is, like, oh, I guess, hi. <laughs> kind of flubbed that one, but that alerted came in just the thing I need like a little punctuation on the situation <laughs> so the next card I pulled was zero four four zero lots of four situation <laughs> uh, so four as you know uh, or maybe you don't in tarot and among other things uh, four corners like a foundation has four corners, uh, a square does. You, you think of it like as a solid base, basically. Like a, you know, like on this one, <laughs> it's like an inept builder, sort of, or just always under construction. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, with the fours. And so before I started doing this, I, I noticed that the fours and uh, I uh, will or have done in the past, look up the numbers that I'm talking about. But since these are angel numbered cards, I'm not really, 
I'm just going with what it's given me because <laughs> when you look up like uh, Joanne's angel numbers, I believe is like a great site to go look up your numerology and angel numbers, but um, they're different <laughs> than what these cards say, which is fine, you know, I mean, I can be flexible. <laughs> so anyway, uh, the number 0440 uh, card has the subtitle, The Gut Feeling, and that just a quick definition, I would call uh, your intuition, your, the gut feeling. Like the phone call that you know is coming, but you, you don't consciously, or you know, you're just not like letting yourself in on that magic that like, oh, I'm thinking about this person and then and they just called. That's happened to me like a lot in my life, but then it's happened in the reverse as well, where I'll call someone and they'll say, I was just thinking about you. And it's interesting. Sorry, don't kiss your cat, <laughs> your hairy cat, before you're gonna get in front of a camera and start talking, <laughs> a little piece of advice. <laughs> so, uh, um, Yeah, I said it. Sorry. I <laughs> I don't know what happened. I just went blank for a second just thinking about stuff. Just tuning you out. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. All right. Um, so the key words here are intuition, <laughs> gut feeling, betrayal, pessimism, relating, value, insight, increased perception, love, monogamy wow i mean do we think somebody's cheating on somebody here <laughs> okay i'm gonna read the paragraph follow your gut it's more than just a feeling be real with people and focus on meaningful relationships remember you must also bring value to the table treat others with respect or else karma will bite your ass <laughs> snappy <laughs> three is a crowd okay i just i guess i have not pulled this one before um authenticity is like something that i'm talking about a lot and it's not just me it's uh like here in the united states Man, you really got to have your uh, meters on high to detect what the heck is truth? Is it valuable? Is it worth listening to or taken seriously? Like, wow, I, I feel like my brain is working overtime every time I'm watching something because I'm just seeing layers of things that... It's like the beautiful mind string chalkboard. <laughs> That's what the inside of my brain is like lately. Uh, uh, you know, and this is like very like relationship sounding, uh, but there are parallels to just like life. Uh, you know, like right now with the political stuff <laughs> there's lots of betraying going back and forth and uh yeah you really do have to have like use your intuition and know what the heck's going on but increased perception I, I don't remember reading that one the last time around um Love and monogamy, that's just interesting. Like, I don't, I, I maybe there's going to be more of that. Something I'm missing about that. Um, and I knew it was something to do with fours before I started, and I'm not sure. You know, maybe I'll get it while I'm talking now. Maybe I won't. So, uh, the last card of the angel card numbers, angel number cards <laughs> I pulled was 666. Six, six. Which I really just, I don't have anything to say about it. it. It's just whatever this is going to tell me. I have no feeling about it at the moment. The subtitle is Reflect. 
and I should have just looked up the sixes because I meant to do that and I, oh, anyway I didn't do it <laughs> so moving on um, reflect is interesting because I was watching the premiere of the third season of the Netflix television series Sweet Tooth and um, well it's the final season so that's kind of sad but the whole story is kind of sad um, I don't know I think I did a video on it already but I'm, I don't know maybe I'll do another one because of the the point in the story like I, I have a, a, a movie and TV show group that I'm on in on Facebook and I sent the trailer there and the only thing I said and, and you know probably if you've watched it like I can rattle on so I probably put the all time shortest post along with that trailer for that season of uh, the last season of <laughs> Sweet Tooth and all I put was reflections but I always think that if you know I'll, I'll link the, let me write it down so I don't forget um <laughs> If you know at all the premise of that show, it has to do with man and animals and the treatment of each other and, hold on, let me not lose that, sweet tooth, and it has like really great actors, um, see, I, like I need to do a video on it, anyway, um, and one of the main um, sort of locus of all of these different layers of that story that, you know, we can reflect upon as real people that are not, you know, like the people in the story by any means, like we, what happens to them is unlikely to happen to us. But, uh, Wolves played, uh, I imagine they're going to play highly throughout the, the rest of the episodes, but it made me think about, like, I look at it and there's a disease that happens that brings men and animal together in such a way that, like, you can't go on abusing the world that each other lives in and taking like all of the resources from everything else including the wildlife and it made me think of like the people in boats and yachts and that that are getting bumped around by whales you know and kind of aggressively but then also there's all these other uh videos of animals going in need to humans in the ocean like a baby seeking, like a baby, uh, I can't even remember what, like maybe an orca or, I don't know, <laughs> some kind of whale, I think, or a dolphin. And it came to this fishing boat and got these people's attention and got them to understand that they should follow it. And it took, it, took them back to its mother, who was so tangled in fishing uh, net or wire or something, or line wire, ugh. It looked like wire. It was cutting it, poor thing, so bad. But, you know, it somehow was able to communicate to these people, my mama needs help and you can help. This is your crap. Come deal with it. <laughs> you know, of course, I editorialized a little bit on that, but it's very beautiful to see. And even though it's kind of scary and I don't want to, like, I'm not, like, really a big boat person <laughs> anyway, like, I like the beach and everything, but if I go out too deep, I start thinking about what I cannot see between me and the top of the water, <laughs> you know, then I get the willy, so I have a lot of respect for those, like, I don't want to be in a bump or some more, because, like, I'm going to knock you out, and I don't think they like to eat humans, but, I mean, maybe they would want to bite you, too, if they want to knock, you know, I mean... I don't know what's going through their heads except like you guys have really screwed up our home will you just stop you know so 
the things to reflect on in that show a lot. <laughs> so, yeah, you forgot I was talking about Sweet Tooth, huh? <laughs> That's not even what I'm talking about. So anyway, anyway um, the keywords on this card are love, affection, compassion, kindness, attention, self-love. Well, they always say you can't do the last one without doing all of the other ones that came before first. You gotta take care of yourself, and then you can take care of somebody else. Those are the rules. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Several unexpected developments will enter your life and impact how you feel. This is a chance to reevaluate your identity. Hmm. Man, beast. Hmm. Let me reflect on that. Uh. You need a mental shift toward greater optimism, self-assurance, and trust. Put your faith in your gut and your inner voice. Here's the gut again. The gut feeling, the intuition. Where is it going? You know. Okay, no, no, no. Uh, pay attention to your feelings and use them to help you become a better person. Well, that is what my, well, I was talking about that earlier. <laughs> That's my goal, always. But I don't think it's just me alone. I think that most of the time we're on some sort of self-improvement quest, even, <laughs> even in the case of when we're just like feeling down on ourselves and just the have like the worst opinion of ourselves and just like that, you know, like, I, I don't know if everyone's had those days, but I've certainly had some. <laughs> and I know other people who have mentioned it. So, why am I talking about that? Well, um, you, you, you do get out of that mood, though. Like, you're not the worst forever. <laughs> um, you, oh, like, even, like, even that might be a, a, an odd form of self-help. Like, you get to a place where you just need a certain kind of goad, goading. What? <laughs> I almost said something rude. <laughs> yeah, you bet. You know, whatever works, we're not all the same, you know? Uh, we're just not. <laughs> So uh, then I pulled three cards from the Miracle of Cosmic Oracle deck. Da -da -da -da. There you go. Um, and they are not that. You have such a bright light inside. Stop dimming it. There's three, so I'm going to just let you see those first before I start talking about stuff. When you find something that excites you, go all in and enjoy the ride. Go all in. Eh, eh, eh. Enjoy it. <laughs> and finally, speak up and speak out. Let your voice be heard loud and clear. So look at this picture, okay? This seems to be a planet crashing into uh, uh, another planet, or I mean, uh, I'm not sure what you call this. Where's my, I'm not sure what the technical term is for this business here. And I can't tell if it's like the pole of a planet or some sort of space cloud business. I'm, I'm just not sure. Um, <clears throat> that's not it. <laughs> um, but it, it looks like it may well be solid because there's this other planet or what did Pluto turn into after they decided it wasn't a planet anymore? An asteroid? <laughs> I don't think that's right. I don't think that's right. But if this is a planet, because look at this curve of this horizon there. Yeah, I guess it's a planet, and I guess it is smacking to, like, the pole of it. 
there's no up and down in space. I don't know if that's a north or south pole. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> space knowledge. <laughs> anyway, this little guy is smacking into this guy, and that's what it sure looks like. So, um, that's just like, uh, it feels like when I want to say something, because I'm speaking up a lot more like I've been saying for years I'm gonna stop editing editing myself but then I was just still doing it and now I'm getting a lot better at um actually editing myself like just not saying anything <laughs> or being a little bit more judicious when I do but <clears throat> this may have to do with the problematic problematic attitudes that I sometimes get in the situations <laughs> like the customer service rapport sometimes turns into a crap <laughs> and it's, it's my fault sometimes sometimes you um you're already at the end of your rope when you are calling those places if you're me <laughs> like that's me trying everything and it's like I don't know what the hell to do I need help uh, but, you know, I'm always like, I just want to get my problem across as clearly as possible, just to fast, to get to the fastest resolution if possible. And so, <clears throat> in the case of a certain company, who I'm not going to name again, <laughs> They, I don't know what the heck happened at this place, but you can almost, like, I finally have decided, like, the best way to deal with that, like, not run into, like, over-irritation with those people is just don't call there. Don't say it. Don't call it. And, um, <clears throat> the reason why is because pretty much once they sell you the equipment, they they can't do anything else for you. And they're not even trying to. Like, that whole being helpful with the customer base it only is applicable if they can sell you something so that gets my goat like ads are my enemy <laughs> yes yes I know they provide a lot of jobs for people all across the board like advertising agency agency all the way to the commercial recording studio filming whatever they're always like stopping your stories at the crucial point okay okay don't get distracted by that so <clears throat> i guess i have to go backwards with that but th those places like i have had to learn how to literally carve myself or shape reshape how I deal with other people like in that situation and I swear it sucks because it's like I'm taking those people that are like trying to work and have a job and listen I have had jobs and I haven't had enough to make me think oh I would love to go back but regardless you just don't want like a pain in the butt to come in and sometimes that's what happens and sometimes when you realize, like, oh, wait, they're just saying stuff, but they're not really going to do it, and then, and then you get mad, I feel like that's a little justified, but, you know, better to just bypass the whole thing now, because pretty much if you don't want to buy something else, they are no, it's no good to call them. It's no good. It's not good for your heart and soul and mind. <laughs> just so, anyway, um, but... It has taught me, I didn't finish the thought, that I can, it has taught me how to get across what I mean, even when I'm about to lose my mind with anger, like it's, or frustration, or anger, whatever, I get like really frustrated and I get mad, so call it whatever you want, but, um, I have been trying to get a handle on it forever, and I, I just think I realize right now in the moment, like kind of when I pulled this, but didn't quite like click all the way that 
it just uh, helped me to like refine <laughs> the way that I speak when I'm like in that sort of intensity. That's good. Like you want to avoid this collision at all costs. Uh, anyway, so this other card here, when you find something that excites you, go all in and enjoy the ride. Well, you know, it's interesting. This is going to sound kind of nutty if you live in the United States and you care about, like, presidential elections or politics, but we just had this ruling from our supreme judicial people, and um, I do not concur. <laughs> However, it's got, like, a lot of fear projected on it, um, and... You could say, like, oh my god, it's really bad, it's terrible, and do a bunch of Pollyanna, well, I don't know if that, uh, I have to look that up, but just, um, you know, crying wolf, chicken little, um, upsetting people when it doesn't need to be, and the, the thing is, is like, yeah, there could be some upsetting things coming down the road, but upsetting things have been happening for, like, the past 10 years and beyond and forever. Like, it's just a, a function of life here, and it just, the whole thing, like, the, I've had to, like, learn how to scale it to, like, a level that, you know, that, that I can deal with. Like, I don't want to be all, ah, oh, my rights are gone, and blah, I had this, and that is not productive to uh, get upset like that. <clears throat> so, uh, just, I'm just, like, not even going to deal with it. Like, it, when it comes time to vote, I'll do my vote. You know, um, I'm, you know I'm not going to be able to stop watching the the chaos, the car wreck, I was going to say, it was not nice, but I don't know, like, the power steering, or the steering cutout in, in this vehicle that we're currently on with the dueling presidential fellas, um, and I just, I don't want to go all <laughs> do, doom and gloom and <laughs> fall into the black hole or black planet or whatever is happening there but um yeah you know it's funny it just I just it just occurred to me like go all in and enjoy the ride if you look at it if it were a black hole it's like it has that um invisible edge like the pools have that became pretty fashionable in the past I don't know decade or so a disappearing edge whatever it is but you, I just saw it as a slide, like, woo, jump, like, a, you know, like a nighttime water slide hole. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm just not gonna, like, give it a bunch of my energy, and I'm just gonna find something that makes me happy instead of thinking what could go wrong, because... The time to have changed and fixed all of this stuff was probably 10 years ago. And the way to do it was not by voting. We should have been doing what the Republicans have been doing, which is uh, getting candidates out and elected. And uh, that is the most obvious strategy, but it's hard because... Well, I'm not a Democrat. I'm not anything anymore. Like, it just, I give up. Forget it. Well, I'm just going to vote for whoever does less harm, in my opinion. Um, and I do lean left, but <clears throat> they have not been doing anything that I've wanted, really. Like, I was glad that Obama got elected, but that it turned into, like, I was having a fantasy dream or something. So, okay, anyway, um don't get slogged down by all the potential madness <laughs> you know um give yourself a freaking break give yourself a good time like you know just like remove yourself from the situation like seriously give yourself a break um you you know even if those things are not of a concern to you 
the things that reverberate from it will affect you, will touch you. So, um, don't go there. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Because you have such a bright light inside. Stop dimming it. Be bright and fun and happy. Not glum and dim and grim. <laughs> okay, so I pull three from the... Shaman's Dream Oracle deck, which I cannot find right now to show you. It's got to be right here, though. Yep, there it is. This poor package. I need to get me some tins to put my cards in. So, yes, I pulled three from this here deck. And they are... First was... Is that the first one? Yeah. First one was Deep Quiet. The number 11 card. Meditation and Stillness. Well, I find that helpful. Um, especially uh, when I get worried. So, but you know, the thing is, is like, when I'm like, kind of like a... Uh, like my mind is kind of sizzling with too much stuff like overstimulation or like you know kind of making me like get upset um sometimes the meditation and stillness is not the way to go like the passive meditation is often I find better to go take a bike ride and like just like get out of my mind completely and have my body be the focus of my attention for an extended period of time until I get sore, until I get tired, until I have to pee, until the I get out of the zone where my music stays on. That company. <laughs> um, but it takes me out of my head, so. And also... <clears throat> Uh, with the the earphones in, uh, even though there's like a music going on a lot of times, I'll have like T-Mobile interruption and it'll be like several houses and I won't know if I have written out of range of my home internet source and uh, or if it's just like a bunch of people <laughs> getting that T-Mobile deal. There's a There was an ad about... Uh, it was a competitor of T-Mobile, but <laughs> they were complaining about, like, a people having, like, a group walk, and uh, they walked by one house, and they had T-Mobile, and it would, like, shut off everyone's music, and it's almost like an ad, you know, interrupting your stories at the crucial point. <laughs> it's kind of irritating. But either way, with the uh, earphones in, I find that most people will respect the fact that I have earphones in and not be trying to talk to me. <laughs> but, um, you get, like, a sense of silence while your body's going on. Or I do. I don't know. It's like a whole thing. <laughs> so, uh, the next card I pulled was The Farther Gate. And I remember when I pulled it, something just all popped right out of my mouth. And it was... There's always something to reach for. And, you know, like, <laughs> this is definitely one of those, you know, at the end of the journey, uh, or, you know, you finally get to the, uh, on the, the end of the journey, where you get to the place of, I don't know, uh, glory, treasure, that you were just, that's what the whole trip was about, you know, and... I don't know, the farthest gate makes me think that you had to go through some stuff, some obstacles, hardships, and they built character, building character, <laughs> and gave you strength and experience. The subtitle for this card is Bolt Step Forward, and the number is 55. <clears throat> I'm just going to go with the basics here on that. Uh, it's uh, fives, it's change. And <laughs> four, five, 
six. Just funny little thing. Not saying it's all super meaningful. And so the third card of that deck I pulled was Watchers, the Transpersonals. Now, what was I saying about observing? Oh, maybe that was something else. Well, anyway, um, the Watchers, there's a mythology of, like, biblical Watchers. You can look that up. I'm not gonna, I'm not, like, real, uh, conversant on it, so I'm not even gonna try. I know a new movie was released recently called The Watchers. I think it's some kind of paranormal. I'm curious. <laughs> uh, but... I kind of feel like, is that not what we do with each other? Uh, we spend a lot of time observing each other. We develop uh, feelings for each other. In fact, you know, I don't know. It's, it might be kind of like too abstract, but I had watched this uh, new, it's not a new, it's a new to me channel on YouTube. And uh, the name escapes me right now. But it has, like, uh, messages from spirit. But they always seem to be very sort of, like, soulmate, twin, flamey. And they don't ever say either of those words. But they do talk about, like, people that you would have met at some point And you had an effect on them. And, like, it very much sounds like twin flame. But and this particular one that I watched earlier, like right before I did this, was very like love relationship oriented. But the thing that I really liked about it was that it focused on how when someone sees you from afar, they, you know, they build up an attraction that it starts to feel like love. And I was just talking in <laughs> the last video about um, second to last video about uh, people thinking things about you because they get to see you and they are attracted to your appearance like that's kind of what started a other video off about is that attraction to your appearance can be kind of deceptive to yourself especially when you're not directly interacting with that other person and sort of also letting them know that like this is where you're at about them or if you haven't even met them like it was just the same thing I was just talking about but it's true like I feel like and this video also said like you have to put in the work to build up a friendship you have to like earn trust and respect you spend time with each other to figure out if you even want to spend time with each other. Like, do we get along or uh, no? Like, <laughs> but you don't get to love just from looking at a picture and maybe superficially talking to someone. Like, that is a whole tapestry of layers of uh, obstacles, hardships, uh, strength, experience, <laughs> intuition. Betrayal, pessimism, like you're scared to death that it's gonna foul up and that could make it foul up. Like, there's a lot going on. Monogamy, love, increased perception, insight, value, like all of these things. So, um, like it really focused on that and that's what appealed to me because I feel like I am trying to get that across a lot of times and really... I feel like I'm not getting a response because that is not what the other per person is talking about. <laughs> like, that is not their thing. So, um, those watchers, like, we watch each other from afar, yes, and I, I did use the term stalker, but I it, it has a negative connotation because of the very mechanism that I'm talking about, but it doesn't always have to go that way like we don't have to have our experiences the hard way like 
You can have a soft stalker <laughs> and survive the experience mostly intact. You know, like not too traumatized or, or at all. Like, like I haven't had the other experience. Thank goodness. I, I do not want it. Please and thank you. But um, just in your like everyday life, like your coworker, you're gonna watch. Um, my neighbors, I watch them. You know, uh, it's not hunting, but it. As I'm saying it, it almost feels like it, like watching them, like seeing how they behave, you know? And it's not the uh, appearance attraction thing in the case that I'm talking about right now. It's just sort of, you know, observing. Um, right now there's a lot of new people, so of course I'm checking them out. That makes sense. Not like trying to see, just, you know, like, oh, wow, well, who's this new person? Let me familiarize myself with their appearance so I'm not like who is this person <laughs> this year all the time you know what I mean maybe you don't anyway I pulled one card finally <clears throat> from the animal spirit or the wild unknown animal spirit deck this year and uh it was the wolf card which <laughs> did I mention that in uh sweet tooth wolves prominently uh, played in the story. They played a prom prominent role. Mm, that sounds good. A prominent role. Does that have poppy seeds or black sesame seeds? Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, so, I wanted you to focus on the wolf's focus, actually. <laughs> it's intense gaze. or in Yeah, it's pretty intense. But it's not threatening, it's really watching and observing, <laughs> like, just taking a good look. Um, spoilers, always with the spoilers. So Sweet Tooth, one of the, I, I did mention it has to do with man and beast. Um, and then I also mentioned the way that we interact with just a small section of beasts in the ocean and how the relationship could be make or break. You know, it just really depends on, you know, the attitudes involved in the situation, like I mentioned in my notes. Uh, the, the, in the story, what eventually happens is that there are man-beast hybrids. I'll just keep it at that. In this particular episode, one group of them were part wolf hybrid. And the characteristics were not so different from wolf or human pack animal. Um, but they did have a sort of very wolfy but human uh, gaze. And uh, in the wild, sometimes things happen. I mean, I don't know, I guess wolf arguments and power plays and things that are like someone gets hurt in the. Uh, the familial structure where there's like a, I guess it's sort of pyramidal and everyone's sort of subservient to the what do you call it, the top wolf well the rest of the pack is subservient to that one and <clears throat> I guess there's always like power plays and struggles for dominance you know because eventually the one at the top's going to get old and I don't know it's like a struggle from forever, you know, for, you know, move the old one out of the way and either, like, eliminate them or dominate them so much that they are, you know, they get, they cower and go off, you know. There's all these dynamics, but in the show, both the people and the hybrids had a very, 
animalistic mentality, you know? Um, but then also the really gross human obliviousness. And <laughs> so it's like, just keep thinking of those whales in those boats. <laughs> anyway, I hope you got the gist of whatever I've been babbling about. <laughs> it is time for me to go. Thank you and good night.